there's Don and Rhonda. Should we see if they want to grab some food? Yeah, let's. So what do you guys think of your first time at the face sale? It's been amazing. It's been absolutely amazing. The, uh, the country out here is breathtaking. Speaking of Longhorns, how did you get involved in the Longhorn industry? Well, it's a long, but I'll make it a short story. We raised commercial Angus, um, brought a registered, covered them with a registered Angus bull for many years, mainly for the ag exemption. And uh, so a neighbor that we met through our church um, had a herd of longhorns and he invited us over to, to meet them. And I also bred um, registered cutting and reining horses. So my policy at our ranch was no horns on our ranch because I didn't like them around my horses. So I went and visited the longhorns at our neighbors and I just fell in love. The calves were just the adorable. The, yeah, the, the, the diversity yeah. of the colors and the and the horns and everything. We I just fell in love with them. So came home, talked to Don and said, I'm ready to sell our Angus herd and get some longhorns. <laughs> I was against it at first. Yeah. And then I went out there, I visited the ranch and that's the babies were really the, what got me. I saw all the different colors. And you see a red cow grow uh, you know, red and white or, or even just a solid white, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it just amazed me how, you know, we, we had black and red Angus, right? right? So you're gonna get a black one or a red one. Right. <laughs> yeah, the color, the color is was real important. I mean, it, well, it just attracted us and, and drew us to the breed, and just the diversity, like the different shapes of the horns and and the temperament and the disposition of the Longhorns. They were so much more social than the Angus and the limousine and all that that we raised. Um, it just it was just easy to fall in love with them. So we sold all of our our whole herd, and we went and spoke with a, a gentleman that was, uh, he was in Greenville, Texas, and Bighorn Ranch, mm -hmm. Bighorn Ranch, and I'm trying to remember his name. Billy Buchanan. Billy Buchanan. And he took us around his ranch, and, and they show, they were big in the show, in so, show circuit, so they showed a lot of cattle. So most of their cattle um, were from big body, you know, big size I think Sandman Sandman, Sandman was, was his was his big herd sire back in that day and it, this is back in 2007 and we did a tour of his ranch and we ended up everything I saw of course I wanted to buy I just kind of went at it with <laughs> all I saw was beauty and I and we basically bought on the beauty of the cow and we didn't study pedigrees uh, we didn't know anything but we got our first longhorn herd he delivered them to our ranch dropped them off and we sure enjoyed them for a long time. So we started getting more active in the TLBAA as members and meeting other people. And we looked at our pedigrees versus the other pedigrees that people were uh, promoting and learning more about them. Going to the Horn Showcase, that was a big, our first Horn Showcase was a big learning experience for us. And the people that you first leaned on for advice after you started going to shows and sales? Well, uh, interesting enough, we became um, uh, pretty close with the Rombecks, and uh, Justin was pretty instrumental in um, teaching us a lot of the pedigrees. He's He was kind of the guy that, you know, I was intrigued by because of his knowledge of all the pedigrees, and I started understanding why pedigrees were so important in this breed. Um, so I learned a lot from him as far as, you know, studying the pedigrees and I mean he was like a just a, a book of knowledge when it came to pedigrees uh, we got to know them pretty well um, and kind of partnered with them on a few things and as a matter of fact we ended up uh, because of Justin we partnered on our first partnership cow which was Beal Ketchit which was the dam of the famous Bob Loomis Beal Rio Ketchit and uh, we ended up doing our first uh, embryo work with her and produced some six full sisters to be a Rio catch it from that relationship with the Rombecks. So do you have a favorite cow out of your herd? From the Out of our herd? Yeah. 
right now, the one that's pulling on my heartstrings is our uh, one we produced. She uh, she is out of 50/50, and uh, total spectrum a cow that we bought from Bill Hudson at the Legacy Sale, and her name is um, 3P Poetry Blend Poetry Blend, and she's just to me the best one of the best heifers we've ever produced. She's brindle. She's got beautiful horn direction. She's clean. She's tall. She's got a really laid back personality and we can't wait to start producing calves out of her. Right now she's kind of um yeah I'd say she's my favorite. She's my favorite uh, too. total spectrum was a really nice cow that uh, we picked up at the legacy sale and uh, did very well for us. She's she's grown a number of nice heifers out of different bulls and we have another one that's out of Jamaicaism and Total Spectrum. It's called Total Respect. And she's Total Respect. She's, she's a, a close call with poetry. She, they're I'm like not, not, side by like side. It's hard to pick be, which one. She might even be my favorite. So. Yeah. yeah, so they're kind of both both of our favorites. but And we, we hope to build, our, build a herd off of those two heifers, um, and along with some others. But right now, those are our favorites. So what do you two do outside of Walmart? Well, I own and operate uh, for almost 14 years now a full-time uh, kennel of Great Danes. So I breed Great Danes, um, Harlequins and Mantles, uh, AKC registered, and we um, we have clients all over the country, and we've been doing that for a long time, and that keeps me pretty pretty busy. Um, and then along with the cattle, that's what I do uh, pretty much is take care of the operating part end of the in the breeding plans and things like that and Don and I you know of course work together as a team and do that but Don has a full-time job outside of the ranch. My <laughs> job is I, I work for a, a company named called West Corporation and I run the Telco purchasing arm. I, I purchase all the Telco services from AT&T, Verizon and all the big carriers and international Telco services. Where did 3P come up with? Like, where did you guys come up with that? Well, that was a hard one. We we came up with all kinds. We started out, our ranch started out with Into Spots Ranch because we liked color. So we were into spots, into color and spots. And right so it was just, and that's how my kennel name got started as well. And then we said, you know, it's not really working for the cattle herd. So we changed our our company name and went with 3P Longhorn Ranch because of the three Poes and Don, myself, and our daughter Shelby. We have a couple of, uh, one game to play with you. Oh. Um, okay. We have a couple brands drawn on uh, some paper back here and we're going to have you guys guess them, see if you know. Okay. So, okay, so we have five brands and we're going to see how many of them you know. So, okay. You ready? All right. I hold up the first one. better at this than I am. <laughs> Am I supposed to turn around and look at it? Yeah, yeah. the camera can see. Give us a... Oh gosh. I know who that is. Can I give you a hint? Yes. Female. She lives in Alabama. Nancy Dunn? Yep. <laughs> you should know that, right? <laughs> I should know that. I knew the brand. Oh, that's um... Rock and H. Dale. Dale, Dale Hunt. Hunt. Cheryl. I don't know that one. Wait, wait. No. Oh, yeah, think yeah, about yeah, it. You gotta think um, about this one. You know this one. It has nothing to do with his ranch name. Like no. the brand you uh -huh. wouldn't think has to do with the ranch name. Nope, he's had long He's from this part of the time. country, kind of. Mm -hmm. He's been Dickinson. in it forever. Kind of. Nope. Was, he, was he on the board? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's Lots of hunting in his spare time. I don't know that one. Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger Genetics. Brett Dillon. Brett. <sighs> okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. See, now you'll forever know it, right? There you go. <laughs> this one? That is... I you know, know this one. You I do these, know it. You can see these guys all the time. I know. They're fellow Texan. Lonesome Pine. <laughs> I heard that up there. Yeah, you <laughs> Randolphs. <laughs> 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 And then this one. Sun, um, yeah, that's right. 
Is it sunrise? Mm, other way. Sunset. Sunset. No. Well, Sundown. Yeah. Sundown Ranch. Yep, yes. That's it. There you go. Well awesome. Done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Four out of how many? Five? Five. Okay. We did okay. Is there any um, advice or anything else that you got, you would like to share with people about your breeding program or long, the Longhorns in general? Just something you've learned along the way. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot to learn. Uh, I just would advise new breeders that don't do what we did when we get in. Don't just buy your cattle based on what looks pretty to you, um, unless you just want to do it as a as pets or you know a hobby or something but if you want to breed longhorn cattle you know meat breeders go see their programs then see what you like you know it's it takes a lot of time and effort to um to learn the pedigrees my recommendation is to go to the sales and meet the people talk to the people yes don't feel committed to purchase at the sales just go and, and meet people and learn about it keep and up with the that way. Yeah. Make, keep up with the market because the market fluctuates a lot but um also get involved in the futurities go to the futurities and study those cattle look at who's winning those classes study those pedigrees meet those breeders go see their programs and um you know, take it one step at a time, but do your do your homework. Um, and we want new breeders to come in to our breed, and we want them to stay in the breed. And um, and the way to do that is to just take your time, get to know people, and then start breeding what you like. So one last little thing that we usually do at the very end is called the rapid fire questions. Mm -hmm. So you think of the very first thing that comes to your mind. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. The first thing. What's your guilty pleasure? Ooh, beer. wine. <laughs> beer and wine. Okay. <laughs> What's your favorite song or artist? Um, I love um, Tennessee whiskey. If you had a superpower, what would it be? To make people happy. All right. Tell the future. Tell the future. Ooh, it's a dangerous one. Yeah. <laughs> if somebody could play you or would play you in a movie, who would it be? Would... Country artist that just got divorced from the guy that she shouldn't have married in the first place. Miranda Lambert. Miranda Lambert. <laughs> she would play, would play me. She could be. She could be. She could play she could me. She's oh, sassy. Yeah. Oh boy. Uh, Jack Nicholson. Oh! <laughs> yeah. I can see that. Alright, and the last question is, is what is the first and last app on your phone that you check every day? Oh. Uh, weather? Weather. <laughs> weather. Weather app. Unfortunately, I know it's boring, but it's it's been critical in our lives on a daily basis for a long time now. And then the last app? Yeah. There's probably... Facebook, I guess. Facebook and the weather. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you both. You're welcome. Hey, Have a lunch. Another Enjoy tip for the Longhorn breeders is to, once you get your heart established, use hired hand. As you <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you have a must. Hired hand websites, <laughs> interactive websites. Phone. I do want to add this real quick. That is how I studied my pedigrees. Started using it so much as a tool to learn all the pedigrees and how to breed my cattle looking at offspring that have been produced by certain bulls and cows and it's been a very effective tools to uh, get you a hard hand website <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks,